Hello, hello, hello. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Wherever you are, guys. This is uh, Adventure 494. Okay, I'm back to proceed with our Caribbean tour today. We are located at uh, Louise Munoz Marine International Airport. Tango Juliet, Sarah Juliet. And we are flying to, uh, today we are flying to Princess Tango November Charlie Mike. Princess Juliana Airport, which is in uh, St. Martins. Yeah, St. Martins, St. Martins. Right, we'll be using the uh, Piper Turbo. If you would like to join me, I am again uh, uh, the Southeast Asia server. You're most welcome to come and join me. Right, we'll be doing this flight. Uh, let me just show you the flight plan. I've got little nav map here which I've plotted out the, the whole tour that we are actually doing uh, started off way back in Miami this is the rum tour by the Sky Park we have done all this uh, now we are actually doing lake number 8 not lake 8 but most, more of part 8 so sometimes I will cover a couple of airports in a day sometimes just one airport depends on my time uh, right so we are flying from Luis Munoz Marine International Airport which we landed about a week ago and we are doing some detours as well so I'm gonna to fly to Benjamin Rivera Norman something something which is an airport right in the middle of here we'll probably do a touch and go there and then we'll probably cover some of this POIs uh, Bush Talk Radio POIs Savannah Island maybe you get some ideas of what these islands or this area is all about which is quite interesting to me that's the reason why I'm doing this tour so I want to find out about you know about these places is interesting we'll be flying over uh, King um, International uh, King Airport right and we'll be proceeding down south to Henry E. Rochland Airport uh, we'll probably do a touch and go there as well and then there's a POI here another POI here is a it's probably a, f a flight that went down it's an ALM flight so we, we need to know what flight that is and what happened to it back in the days and then uh, we will end up in Princess Juliana International Tango November Charlie Mike for the day yeah it's kind of a journey right we're gonna go up to the to the east uh, south and back to the east again we'll end up there and la later on we'll continue the rest of this lakes of lights yeah until we finish on in uh, in uh, the last one will be ended up ending up in um, DNCB. Okay, right, cool. Let's jump into it. So I'm going to put this aside. Let's prepare the aircraft for takeoff. Uh, we are doing the Piper Aero Turbo, and we're using this livery today. Okay, since we are in the aircraft, we might just open the doors to get some air in. Okay, while well, we do the checks before we take off. Nice. Right, let's go outside and have a look. Do a visual on this and then our rudders. Okay, they're all right. If I go inside and uh, switch on the iPad here, or electronic flight pack, they call it. We have the chocks, tie down, stow bars. You can enable all this stuff. Auto fuel selector. Now I'm gonna use auto fuel selector, so you can see that we can actually attach all this stuff. Kind of neat. Okay, let's switch. Take that off. Cabin door. Let's keep, leave it open for now. Uh, do I need a GPS? I'm gonna do old school VR VOR today. Let's go old school VOR. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Uh, what else? Uh, let's uh, refill the oil. We charge the battery. Okay, that's it. We want to do our own startup and everything. Okay. All right. Uh, we've done the inspection. Try and see whether we can uh, follow this uh, checklist that we have. We've done pre-flight. Pre-flight exterior done. Circuit breakers are in. Let's check circuit breakers. Alternate uh, air is off. Is closed. Max RPM. Let's do the max RPM. Prop lever to max. Fuel tank 53%. Let's go 70%. 80%. Uh, 
and let's have a look at the fuel fuel tanks are here it's fine all right uh, fuel tanks okay before engine start let's do a cold engine start throttle halfway battery switch is on alternator is on beacon let's switch on the beacon just here beacon on all right navigation lights are on let's bring this guy on fuel pump let's put it low mixture let's put it halfway let's check the propeller area clear okay clear prop let's start the engine up now Get a start. Mixture reach. Let's bring the RPM down to about 1000. Alright, we're going to taxi to runway which is closest to us. Let's see. Uh, let's have a look. That's where we are. Okay, we're going to just do a Turn around and then go around B08. Yeah, it is closest to us. So the runway is on the other side. Been flying the DC6 lately, trying to get uh, used to the aircraft. It's a complex aircraft, lots to do, very busy when you're flying that aircraft. Alright, we're gonna set the heading to 114. After takeoff, all right, set. Since we have a kind of a lengthy runway, we're not going to use any flaps with this. In fact, we can just go halfway. You don't even need the whole runway to take off. I'm going to go to this junction over here and take off from there. Transponder set to alt. Fuel pump is on. Landing lights are on. Flaps is zero. Okay, let's do this. Right rudder, airspeed is alive. Takeoff is going to be about 70 knots. So we are flying up to 5,000 feet today. Puerto Rico was discovered by Europeans in 1493. However, it was not until August 1508 that Juan Ponce de Leon discovered San Juan Bay and named the area Puerto Rico. The city of San Juan was named for John the Baptist and established in 1521. In 1537, La Fortezela was constructed but did not provide the required protection to the city from French raids and local Tainos uprisings against the Spanish conquerors. From 1539 until 1582, Castillo San Felipe del Moro was constructed to better protect San Juan. 
the population in 1582 was approximately 850 people. By the beginning of the 17th century, the Dutch West India Company was actively trading in the area. The company decided that attacking and defeating San Juan would give them a more secure trading position within the Caribbean. In 1625, Dutch privateers attacked a lightly defended San Juan. However, San Juan did not fall to the Dutch because while the privateer's main force was attacking the Del Moro fortification, San Juan militia were able to counterattack. As a result, the Dutch retreated but not before collecting the wealth from civilian homes and burning the city to the ground. Many other battles were fought in and around San Juan, including off. multiple attempts by the British to take over the city. It was following the Spanish-American War in 1898 that Puerto Rico was ceded to the United States from Spain. In 1899, the population was 32,000. By 2010, the population had grown to over 395,000, making San Juan the 46th largest city under the jurisdiction of the United States. Right, uh, we're heading directly to this airport over here, which is TG Tango Guru Chari Papa, right? And then we'll do a touch and go and proceed to the next destination. So we are on autopilot at the moment, so I'm going to just turn a bit more to the left, maybe 120, climbing at uh, 1000 feet. So where are we now? Let's have a look. Since we are flying, we must know where we are. Okay, we're just leaving Puerto Rico. This is Puerto Rico. And we're heading towards this island here. There's an airport there. I might just do a touch and go. And then we're going off to... I don't know what this island is called. Mm, should have a name, right? The name. There's a lot of islands here, I'm not sure. I'm not sure what the name is. It's a POI here. I just want to want to cross across Savannah Island something something. We'll have a flyby. It's even another POI here. This looks like a lighthouse. I'm not sure whether that's gonna be in the sim. Well, we'll find out. And then we will fly down to this island here. Henry E. Rolson. And we fly east again towards Princess Juliana today. And we'll finish off there today. Wow, this is an interesting airport. We've got some hills coming on our way. Let's do it anyway. Let's switch on the pump, switch on the landing lights. Are we not landing? I think someone's landing in front of us, so let's have a look. I think we should have landed from the other side. It's a bit dangerous to land from here. Let's see. Yeah, it's not a Shouldn't be landing from here, it's too dangerous. Let's try it anyway. Let's go to full flaps, gears down. Okay. I part of the Spanish Virgin Islands. It is located approximately 17 miles okay. east of the Puerto Rican mainland, 12 miles west of St. Thomas and 9 that miles of north of Ben. Culebra is spread over five oh, miles and Culebra Pueblo, the downtown area and the administrative center of the island. Residents of the island are known yeah, as Culebra. Do not do that. <laughs> With a population of 1,818 <laughs> as of the latest <laughs> census, it is Puerto Rico's least populous municipality. Do not do that. It's a beautiful place. Look at that. Nice. Beautiful water. Nice. 
guys. Okay, at least we made it one piece. Okay, we, we're going towards the, the lighthouse over there. Gears are up, flaps are up. Gonna go up to. Let's fly to about a thousand and a half, one one thousand five hundred feet, and see if we can see something on the uh, lighthouse over here. Calabrita Lighthouse is the only remaining Spanish era structure in the Culebra Archipelago. Construction of the lighthouse began on September 25, 1882, and was completed on February 25, 1886. The Spanish Crown built the lighthouse to help secure its claim over the main island of Culebra. It is the most eastern light outside mainland Puerto Rico. It guided navigation through the Virgin Passage and the Vercar Sound connecting in the Puerto Rico light system with the Cape San Juan light. It is located on Calabrita, a mile long, half a mile wide Cay off Culebra, an island municipality of Puerto Rico. It was one of the oldest operating lighthouses in the Caribbean until 1975 when the US Navy and Coast Guard closed the facility. The United States Coast Guard has replaced the lighthouse with a solar-powered light beacon. Power goes off. Landing light goes off. And we've got another airport here which I'm going to try and do a touch and go as well. The Savannah Island, one of us. And 2,000 feet. Savannah Island is an islet of the U.S. Virgin Islands located off the west end of St. Thomas approximately 7 miles west of Cyril E. King Airport. The lighthouse is located on the southwest tip of the island known as Virgin Point. The island and the lighthouse mark the east side of the Virgin Passage, the deep water channel between Puerto Rico and the Virgin Islands. The top of the lighthouse is 300 feet above sea level, its light flashes every 4 seconds. The island is only accessible by boat. Well, it looks kind of nice though, the island. Well, there's an airport coming up. I can see the runway from here now. Okay, straight in landing. This is runway... Runway 10, runway 10. Okay, flaps up. Full power. And off we go. Thanks for that. Appreciate that. Gears up. Alright, let's go and have a look at this Blackbeard Castle.
Blackbeard's Castle is one of five national historic landmarks in the U.S. Virgin Islands. It is located in the city of Charlotte Amelie, on the island of St. Thomas. Erected in 1679 by the Danes as a watchtower to protect the harbor as well as Fort Christian, Blackbeard's Castle was originally called Skysborg. It is located at the highest point on. Skysborg served as a very effective vantage point for Danish soldiers to spot enemy ships. Fort Christian no, is a normal level, building, thus making it ideal a for generic building. attackers with cannon fire. However, the fort itself did not provide an ideal view of incoming ships entering the harbor. It is not known what year Skysborg took on the name of Blackbeard's castle, but the infamous Edward Teach, commonly known as Blackbeard, did sail the Caribbean waters in the early 18th century. It has become part of the lore of the island that he used the tower as a lookout for his own purposes of piracy. It was the centerpiece of a private residence for many years, and was turned into a hotel, but is no longer open to the public. Little St. James is a private island of the United States Virgin Islands, off the coast of St. Thomas, and belongs to the subdistrict East End, St. Thomas. The 70 to 78 acre island was owned by American financier and convicted felon Jeffrey Epstein from 1998 until his 2019 death. In 1997, Little St. James was owned by venture capitalist Arch Cummin and was for sale for $10.5 million. In April 1998, a company called LSJ LLC purchased the island for $7.95 million, and documents showed that Jeffrey Epstein was the sole member of LSJ in 2019. The island was valued at $63,874,223. The island was Epstein's primary residence and he called the island Little St. Jeff. In 2008, Epstein's estate on Little St. James had 70 staff. In 1997, the island had a main house, three guest cottages, a caretaker's cottage, a private desalination system, a helipad and a dock. In addition, there is also a blue striped box-like building that initially was topped by a golden dome. The purpose of this construction is unclear, as it deviates in substantial ways from the plans for the music pavilion that had been submitted for approval in 2010 by Epstein's architects. The original building in the plans was of an octagonal footprint, rectangular in cross-section, and had two side rooms extending from the outside walls, it was also much lower in perspective, and the dome extended from the octagon over onto the roofs of the side buildings. The building that was eventually constructed was much taller, in the shape of a cube, and did not have any side rooms. The dome was also well within the footprint of the queue, and the building did not have any of the proposed finishes applied to the walls, nor was it constructed out of materials in those plans, namely stone. Okay, we gotta head south now. And I'm gonna uh, climb. Right, uh, we are arriving at this airport over here, which is Henry E. Rosen, Tango India, Sierra X-Ray. We'll do a touch and go here, and then we'll proceed to the next destination. A few eyes here. We'll uh, fly over this PY, and then we'll do a, a landing runway or touch and go landing uh, at runway one zero. Cruisin' Rum Factory is an iconic distillery offering guided tours of its fascinating cellars and open-air warehouses full of barrels. Dating back to the early 19th century, the factory has played a major role in the history of the island. The Nelthrop family, Cruisin' Rum's owners, have been perfecting the recipe since 1760. The rum takes its name from the nickname of the St. Croix locals, known as Crucians. The brand claims to bottle the spirit of the island, having been crafted here for many generations.
Okay, we are we have taken off from the airport and uh, we are heading towards the uh, destination. The next destination, we are going to go up to about 5,000 feet. Um, we have a petroleum refinery company located on the island of St. Croix in the United States Virgin Islands. The refinery was a joint venture between Hess Corporation and Petroleum's the Venezuela. For most of its operating life as Hovenza, it supplied heating oil and gasoline to the U.S. Gulf Coast and the eastern seaboard with the crude mainly sourced from Venezuela. Previously, it had sourced its crude feedstock from a number of other countries, including Libya. At a capacity of about 500,000 barrels per day as of 2010, it was in the top 10 largest refineries in the world. Hess Oil Virgin Islands Corporation started refinery construction in January 1966, having purchased the property from Annie de Chabert and, in October of the same year, the refinery started operating. In 1974, the capacity of refinery was expanded up to its peak at 650,000 barrels per day. The company closed the refinery in 2012. The property continued as a storage terminal only until that closed in 2015. A purchase proposal by Atlantic Basin Refining was vetoed by the Usby Senate, but in November 2015 a joint venture called Lime Tree Bay Terminal succeeded in purchasing the refinery. Alright, so there was uh, Bush Talk Radio coming on, uh, telling you about the area. So we're going to climb up to 5,000 feet and we'll level up at 5,000 feet. We're going to head down to Point Udall, which is another point of interest. So that should be about... Let's head to us there. That's Point Udall coming up. Point Udall is at the east end of St. Croix in the U.S. Virgin Islands, is the easternmost point of the United States including territories and insular areas. A sundial known as the Millennium Monument was built above Point Udall for the New Year's celebration in 2000. It marks the azimuth of the first U.S. sunrise of that year. The monument is a giant sundial which is fitting since Point Udall is the first place the sun rises on U.S. soil. Point Udall offers stunning panoramic sea views and is beautiful to sit at and take in the wonder of the Caribbean Sea. Okay, the next PY is going to be here, so we should be uh, 080. ALM Antillian Airlines Flight 980 was a flight scheduled to fly from John F. Kennedy International Airport in New York City to Princess Juliana International Airport in St. Martin, Netherlands Antilles, on the 2nd of May 1970. After several unsuccessful landing attempts, the aircraft's fuel was exhausted, and it made a forced water landing in the Caribbean Sea 48 kilometers off St. Croix, with 23 fatalities and 40 survivors. The accident is one of a small number of intentional water ditchings of jet airliners. The aircraft was a twin-engine Douglas DC 933CF, operated on behalf of ALM Antillian Airlines by Overseas National Airways, with an owner aircraft and flight crew, and an ALM cabin crew. It was registered in the United States with FAA tail number N935F. The flight carried 57 passengers and 6 crew. The flight crew consisted of Captain Balsy DeVitt, First Officer Harry Evans II, and Navigator Hugh Hart. Flight 980 made a normal departure from Kennedy Airport and had an uneventful flight to the Caribbean. After the flight was given descent clearance to 10,000 feet, regional air traffic control advised that weather in St. Martin was below landing minima, a set of criteria that determine whether landing is possible. The captain elected to divert to San Juan, but shortly thereafter, the tower at St. Martin advised them that the weather had improved sufficiently for landing. The flight made an initial approach to St. Martin, but failed to see the runway in time to line up for landing, and announced a missed approach. Flight 980 then made a second landing attempt, but it, too, was unsuccessful because of alignment with the runway. 
After breaking off that approach, the crew made a third attempt, but the aircraft was too high to land safely. After assessing the weather and fuel situation, the crew elected to divert to St. Croix and received a vector and clearance. At this point, the crew noticed a possible discrepancy between the fuel gauges and what had been computed as the amount of fuel remaining. The captain advised ATC of his intention to ditch the aircraft and began a low approach over the water. Flight 980 ditched in the Caribbean Sea at 3.49 p.m. local time, 30 miles east of St. Croix. Although the pilots flashed the seatbelt signs just prior to ditching, confusion remained in the cabin as to when or whether the plane was to touch down. The public address system was not working on the plane, so the cabin were not given any warning of the impending ditching. Consequently, an unknown number of passengers and crew were either standing up or had their seat belts unfastened when the aircraft struck the water. The sea was rough at the time as a result of the weather conditions. The aircraft remained relatively intact after the water landing, but soon sank in about 5,000 feet of water and was never recovered. The accident resulted in 23 fatalities, as well as injuries to 37 of the 40 survivors. I can see two runway lights, see that? Parallel runways here. There's only one runway. Oh yeah, there's the runway edge lights. Let's descend further. Slow down a bit. So we're doing a straight in landing. Uh, currently about a thousand feet. We just nice a good profile to land. So we are in the flat range, I think. Warning for the gear not down the slow down a bit more then we'll put flaps in. A bit high. Okay, let's put flaps 10 and then landing gears goes down. I think the landing uh, speed or VRF is about 75 knots. Second notch of laps. Put a crosswind here. 75 knots. Marlow Beach is a beach on the Dutch side of the Caribbean island of St. Martin in the territory of St. Martin. It is famous for being Feet adjacent the to the Princess Juliana International Airport. Due to the unique proximity of low-flying airliners arriving and departing from Princess Juliana International Airport, the location is popular with plane spotters. The beach is one of the few places in the world where aircraft can be viewed in their flight path just outside the end of the runway. Watching airliners pass over the beach is such a popular activity that daily arrivals and departures airline timetables are displayed on a board in most bars and restaurants on the beach. What's the aircraft trying to do in front there? It's taking off and landing again. Alright. Okay, we'll take this taxi way out as soon as possible. All right, we will continue our journey. We are going to go to the next airport, uh, which is not that far away from here. And I'm going to go back to runway, runway 10 and take off again. Let's do it. Takeoff will be about sixty. Ah, to cover itself. It's a beautiful scene here. Okay, 
this up. I think they have um, a handmade, is that what they call a handmade scenery for this particular part? But I'm sure it's beautiful uh, in real life. What's that? Seems something on the ground. I think that's the place that we're going to, right? You can see the mountain in front there. That's where we're heading. Did a guy land? Oh yeah, the 747 landed. Oh, this is a beautiful one. I need to take a snapshot of this. Princess Juliana International. Okay. Full uh, lean mixture, proc full RPM. Yeah, we are about almost coming to 2,000 feet. Saba is a Caribbean island which is the smallest special municipality of the Netherlands. It consists largely of the potentially active volcano Mount Sinu, which at 887 meters is the highest point of the entire kingdom of the Netherlands. The island lies in the northern Leeward Islands portion of the West Indies, southeast of the Virgin Islands. Together with Bournemouth and St. Eustatius it forms the best islands. Saba has a land area of 13 square kilometers. The population was 1,915 as of January 2019, with a population density of 148 inhabitants per square kilometer. It is the smallest territory by permanent population in the Americas. Its towns and major settlements are the bottom, Windward Side, Zions Hill and St. John's. Okay. Yeah, this is one of the challenges uh, in the same right for the airports. Sabah Airport, one of them. Okay, wish me luck guys. That annoying sound is because of the gears and not down. Flaps down. Okay. Kind of fast. Full flaps. Wancho E. Rouskin Airport is an airport on the Dutch Caribbean oh, island of Sava. It is widely acknowledged as the okay. smallest airport in the world one, with a very short runway. The airport, named after the Aruban minister Juancho Erasquin, has the shortest commercial runway in the world, only 400 meters or 1,312 uh, feet long, flanked on one side by high hills, with cliffs that drop into the sea at both ends. Although the airport is closed to jet traffic, regional airline propeller aircraft are able to land there under waivers from the Netherlands Antilles Civil Aviation Authority. The most common aircraft to land there are the stole-capable de Havilland Canada DHC 620. Okay, we'll stop and we'll, we'll, we'll take off from here, yeah? Okay, uh, right. Stop, stop, stop. Okay. Whew! That was sort of one. So I'm going to use flap to take off from this one. Uh, let's do two notches of flaps. Flaps are down, landing lights are on. We've got... Okay, let's go. It's a very short runway. Don't know, maybe we can get 50 knots. Yeah, we do. Okay, let's go. Yep. Wow. Up, gears up. Okay, let's take a snapshot of that. Wow, the wind is so strong. The next island is not that far, it's only 16 nautical miles, so we'll do a touch and go here as well. We can. Okay, we are. 
10 knots. Yeah, I can see the runway lights now. Let's descend a bit more. The capture of St. Eustatius took place in February 1781 during the Fourth Anglo-Dutch War when British Army and Naval Forces under General John Fall and Admiral George Rodney seized the Dutch-owned Caribbean island of St. Eustatius. The capture was controversial in Britain, as it was alleged that Vaughan and Rodney had used the opportunity to enrich themselves and had neglected more important military duties. The island was subsequently taken by Dutch-aligned French forces in late 1781, ending the British occupation. Kirstown. Windy. Touch and go. People complaining about the rudder issues on this piper for some reason. Kids up. Next one, we should be going to all right. Turn right to one four zero. Roosevelt. So we are here and then we are fine down. We'll finish off at uh, TFFR today. I know I've got a couple of more stops to do but we'll end up in TFFR today. Brimstone Hill Fortress National Park is coming. Uh, I'm using a software called Touch Portal. I think I made a video out of it as well. Touch Portal. It's free of charge, uh, but if you pay thirteen dollars, you can create unlimited number of pages and unlimited number of. I I also have my Stream Deck here, which I use. Stream Deck. Yep. Uh, because but this is limited, right? We only have fifteen buttons to program. I mean, you can create more pages and all that stuff. But I still find it a bit limit limited. On my iPad, I can create as many buttons as I want. And I can have everything on one screen, whatever I want to do. Like for instance, if I've got my, I can view my temperature here. I've got one button that shows me the temperature here. And then this is the captain view. I've got my six pack view. My uh, radio stack, my iPad view, which is switched off at the moment. The first officer at 45 degrees angle. I got my trim view, my battery and alternators. I've got my captain at 45 angle. Um, left wing view. 
um, fuel, autopilot and fuel. I got my CB views, right wing view, and I've got my internal and external switch as well. So everything is controlled here. And I can also put my rate, I can increase the sim rate. I, I also have an IR tracker which I don't use at the moment, uh, but I can do that as well. So it's interesting, everything is on one screen. And it's only 13 bucks. <laughs> Stream Deck is <laughs> pretty expensive. If you want to learn more, you can go to my YouTube channel, Adventure494. I, I made a video and I show you exactly how to program uh, the screen as well. I'm sure there are tons of other videos on screen. I mean online as well, teach you about touchboard. And there's even one guy who made um, pre-made those buttons for you for MSFS. Hang on, let me bring it up. I think I'll touch portal enable. So this is this is mine. But if you create new buttons, I've got a uh, little nav map, the sky park bridge, which which connects to my Bravo, and it gives me all the lights. I've got a DC6 uh, controls. If I go DC6, you can see. Sorry, not that one. If I go DC6 view, you can see I've got all my DC6 view here, you know, which I need for flight. I've got my Piper view, which is this one here. And you can create unlimited pages and buttons, which is kind of cool. And if I'm not mistaken, if you create um, flows, is it flows or assets? I can't remember. If you create one of the buttons, right? If I click here and create button, you can see I have. Uh, where's Flight Simulator? There you go, MSFS Autopilot, Communication, Electrical, Engine, Environment, everything is being created for you. You just have to click on it and then, you know, maybe use this as a uh, magneto specific. Maybe click on that and you can put in some programming for that as well. Very cool, yeah? A lot of stuff that you can do with this. And I love, I love this. So I think you're quite close to the airport. Let's have a look. The airport's just around the corner. Yep, do use it. It's only 13 bucks if you if you if you go for the um, the paid version, and you can program to your heart's content. No worries, we'll pick that. It does help, you know, when you're flying solo on the DC6, especially because the DC6 has three pilots, sorry, two pilots and one flight engineer. But you are doing it yourself. You need those controls, you know, at the tip, at the tip of your finger. I tried using it on my stream deck, it doesn't really work because the buttons are limited. So I said might as well use because I paid for the 13 bucks and I start programming it. It's kind of fun to do all this stuff, right? Let's have a look. Yeah, cool. It's just around the corner there. We'll do a touch and go here and we will proceed to the next destination, which is going to be to the right. Uh, 145 and we'll end up in this airport here. Okay, we're coming. Uh, next notch of, notch of flaps, landing gears down. It's a thing with real weather, right? They do push, pushing you everywhere. Okay, not less than 75 knots. Gears are down. Flaps are down, landing lights are on, fuel pump is on. We'll do another touching go. is problematic. Full power. Sixty seven. Okay, let's take off. Yeah, take off take off power here is I think about forty. 
the pressures before tea. Okay, gaze up, flaps up. Another good way of taking a quick photo. Oh, nice, right? Snapshot. Alright, let's turn to the right. And we have to head down to 145. Okay, I see the wrong way. Let's put on flaps one. Okay, landing lights on fuel pump on and uh, land. second notch of flaps Beautiful water. Water looks very nice. Not too fast, but we are good. straight one one zero we're flying east now so airport should be just in front of us in a bit all right we're moving straight in runway zero seven beautiful look at that the water is not really doesn't look nice but uh, I'm sure it looks nice in real life yeah I can see that on the way now okay cool all right let's start preparing for landing let's switch on the landing lights fuel pump to low oops and Full RPM, mixture to reach. Let's slow the aircraft down. Yeah, the premium allows you to put in Navigraph. So I'm, I'm thinking whether I should get the Navigraph subscription again. I used to have it, but I hardly use it. I don't know whether I should get it now. I'm contemplating, I'm thinking, okay, flaps on. And gears down. Visually, need to check whether the gears are down. Okay, cool. Chance of Sky Vector. Yeah, Sky Vector is also a good resource, right? It's an awesome resource. But Sky Vector doesn't, doesn't have the approach place, right? The star and the seats and the landing charts, they call it. Yeah, it doesn't have that. If you're doing an IFR flight, you must have that. In my case, I'm basically doing VFR stuff. Lots of VFR stuff, but I don't really need those charts. But it's good practice though. Okay, we 
doing a touch and go here guys, we're not going to stop. We're going off to finish up with TFFR today. Oh my god, it's windy. Airlock! Awesome, thank you very much for the follow. Are we going to touch? Are we going to touch? Let's go. Come on, come on. is right to my chest okay whoa man this aircraft has issues with rajas okay come on come on okay gets up Gonna turn around to two four three. <coughs> nice. Let's take a snapshot of that. Wow. Nice. Another screenshot worthy. Seabird International. Nice. Okay. Nice. Look at that. Amazing. Okay, we'll start descending now. We're kind of close to. Yep, I see the runway, and the runway sees me, and flaps, make a notch of flaps, gears down. Yeah, I think we should have landed on the other run on the other side. I'm not sure whether there's a small little hill right in front of the runway. Gears are down, flaps two notches, and uh, just bring down the speed to about 75 knots. Trim, trim, trim. Gears down, flaps two notches. Let's give another notch of flaps. Runway one zero. Uh, alrighty, full power. Flaps up. Let's go. Nice. Gears up. But not last but not least, turn right to 144. Okay, finally coming around, and it's only about 50 nautical miles, so that's okay. 144. Plymouth is a ghost town on the island of Montserrat, an overseas territory of the United Kingdom located in the Leeward Island chain of the Lesser Antilles, West Indies. Constructed on historical lava deposits near the then long inactive Sophia Hills volcano, the town was evacuated in 1995 when the volcano resumed erupting. 
Plymouth was eventually abandoned permanently in 1997 after it was substantially burnt and mostly buried by a series of pyroclastic flows and lahars. For centuries, it had been the only port of entry to the island. Plymouth is still the de jure capital city of Montserrat, making it the only ghost town that serves as the capital of a political territory. Okay, let's prepare for landing. Let's make sure pump is on, fuel pump is on, landing lights are on. Uh, prop to full, mixture to which. And let's slow the aircraft down a bit. We've got about 18 nautical miles to go. And we are 4,000 feet. Okay. is visible and we can start preparing for landing so pumps are on landing lights are on mixture and prop full wind reach brakes are off it's off okay let's descend a bit more what about nine nautical miles away the aircraft down, let's put landing gears down, check visually whether the landing gears are down, and uh, bring up speed to 75 knots, flaps 1, and I'm not going to go around because of it, it's not land the aircraft. We set for landing. Finally, we have the final destination. Feet on the rudders. Easier flying using the control column because I had I tried using joysticks. I can't do it. It's very hard to land this aircraft with joysticks. Okay, the airbus in front of us. I need to stop before he put her down gently. Okay, why is he stopping in the middle of the runway? Okay, welcome to TFFR. Why is he stopping there? Flaps up. So I'm gonna go to the terminal. Let's go to the terminal. There's another aircraft in front of me. Looks like the airbus taking over everybody. Parking between these two guys. Okay, so we are finally here. Looping Bell, thank you for the uh, company. Right, appreciate that. Maybe I can catch up with you on another stream. And if you are watching this on YouTube, please like and subscribe to the channel. And uh, if you want to follow me on uh, on Twitch, it's Adventure Four Nine Four. So I hope to see you guys soon and uh, happy flying. Take care. Bye bye.